Hello friends, I am in the car and we are going book shopping. Um, this is not my first time I've been in a bookstore since COVID started, but it's definitely been, it hasn't been like a normal year of bookstores. Um, so this will probably be like the only, the third time I've been in a bookstore. Um, and this is my local one, the one I order books from constantly. I just go on their website and they deliver straight to my house. And I found out recently because the people are so nice at my store. They called me personally to let me know that I am allowed in the store. They're only allowing about 10 people at a time and we have to wear a mask, but I'm so excited to go. Um, me and Nick are going because he has a book that he wants to pick up. So we're all very excited. So ready to go book shopping with me? Here we are, it's been so long. I love this place. It's so awesome. Page 158. Guys, look what I found. Look at this little horror section. I love it. Of course, it's mostly Stephen King, but you know, we can't fault them for that. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're gonna take a look at some of these. Ooh, we've got some Joe Hill. Okay, hi. This. It's a Grady Hendrix book that I think I need to get. Let's take a look. Hey friends, so um, it's, it's hard to bookshop and talk to you. Um, and I'm sure it's strange for me to talk to you with my mask on, but currently this is my collection and this is just the horror section. I haven't even looked in the fantasy, the YA, the middle grade. Um, it's fine, everything's gonna be fine. This is my favorite part of this store. This giant chair and just this like the whole kids section. And they have, even though it's small, they have a really good middle grade section. I always find something here that I really like. Like what is this? What is don't turn out the lights? That looks so good. I'm so interested in that. This is our loot. Nick got this one blue book here and the rest are mine and I got this really cool candle and I will haul everything once we get home. Um, but yeah, got a lot of stuff. Really excited for October to read all of these spooky things. And we're home. Guys, I have oh, all the loot. They even, they even gave me like this beautiful page 158 little bag. I'm very excited about this. Um, of course, the moment I start rec recording, my cat wants to be let out. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, life with cats, you know, it's just, yeah, you know, you know if you know. Um, okay, so since I just bought these books, I'm not going to be able to give you a very polished, like off the top of my head kind of synopsis. So I'm going to do something that really annoys me. I'm going to read the synopsis. But let me close that door real fast because that's getting, it's going to get loud. Maybe, I assume I'm always loud. So I'll be right back. Okay, let's get to it. So first off, let's talk about something that's not a book. I got this candle. Guys, I love flypaper candles. And you know, I've been thinking about ordering some candles from like Etsy or whatever Instagram candle account that I follow and I follow a lot, but I figured this would be a good way to support my local bookstore, buy one of can the candles that is like stocked over there. And this is the Shakespeare um, scent and it is cardamom, rosewood, and oud, 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 O-U-D. Anyway, let me see. It smells like old things. <laughs> That's the best way I can like 
describe it, but like in a really pleasant way. Like the way you hug a grandma, that's kind of how it smells. Like in a really perfumey sort of tea shop or old books that are next to a really fun grandma. I'm feeling like this is the scent. Um, and I, I tried to smell through my mask, which didn't really work, but I have confidence that I will love this scent, Shakespeare, if you're interested. Okay, let's move on to the actual books. I'm gonna put this down. Okay, so I have extracted some books from the bag. Let's go with this one. We Sold Our Souls by Grady Hendrix. Guys, if you know me, you know I love some Grady Hendrix. I have read Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, My Best Friend's Exorcism, and now we have in our possession We Sold Our Souls. Sorry for the glare, it's a very shiny book. So I will read the synopsis. Only a girl with a guitar can save us all. Every morning, Chris Pulaski wakes up in hell. In the 1990s, she was the lead guitarist of Dirt Work, a heavy metal band on the brink of breakout success until lead singer Terry Hunt embarked on a solo career and rocketed to stardom, leaving his bandmates to rot in obscurity. Now Chris works as a night manager of a Best Western. She's tired, she's broke, and unhappy. Then one day, everything changes. A shocking act of violence turns her life upside down. And she begins to suspect that Terry sabotaged more than just the band. Chris hits the road and hoping to unite with dirt work and confront the man who ruined her life. Her journey will take her from the Pennsylvania Rust Belt to a celebrity rehab center to a satanic music festival. A furious power ballad about never giving up, We Sold Our Souls, is an epic journey into the heart of conspiracy-crazed, pill-popping, paranoid country that seems to have lost its very soul. Guys, I'm really excited. First of all, it looks like a Rolling Stone magazine. Like. We love that, we love that. Grady Hendrix is all about the creativity, the Satan, the, the, the occult, and I just love everything that I've read from him, and I know I'm gonna love this. Like, heavy metal, satanic music festivals, that is all me, guys. Okay, all right, I'm really excited about this. I'm gonna put this down, and let's talk about the other one. Okay, the next book that I got is called Hex. And this is by Thomas Old Hoyvelt. Yeah, Hoyvelt? Hewvelt. Anyway, so it says, whoever is born here is doomed to stay till death. Whoever settles never leaves. Welcome to Black Spring, a seemingly picturesque Hudson Valley town haunted by the Black Rock Witch, a 17th century woman whose eyes and mouths are sewn shut. Muzzled, she walks the streets and enters homes at will. She stands next to children's beds for nights on end. Her eyes may never be opened or the consequences will be too terrible to bear. The elders of Black Spring prevent the curse from spreading with high-tech surveillance. Frustrated by the lockdown, the town's teenagers break their strict regulations and in so doing, send the town spiraling into depraved practices of the distant past. I'm very excited. That sounds amazing. And it says here on the front that Stephen King thought it was totally, brilliantly original. And I was telling my boyfriend about this and um, I told him what Stephen King said here, the little quote. And I was like, I feel like Stephen King's um, recommendations are kind of like a dime a dozen. I feel like he says praises for almost like any <laughs> horror novel. I could be wrong, but every time I see that, I'm like, mm, I'm gonna find out for myself. You know what I mean? Okay, let's move on to the next book. We'll just reach into this magic bag. Oh, so I got this book. This is called The Candy Makers. I'm going to guess by the cover and the subject um, that it is a middle grade. I saw it um, next to the checkout desk and I was like, a book about candy? I'm gonna get that, yes. Okay, so it says, at the Life is Sweet Candy Factory, Logan, Miles, Daisy, and Philip are about to compete in the national candy making competition of a lifetime. Who will make a candy more delicious than the oozing Crunchorama or the neon yellow lightning chew? The contestants face off in a battle of wits and sugar, but soon they realize that things are not what they seem, and they find themselves in a candy-filled world of surprises, suspense, and mouth-watering creations. Now, 
I read this real fast as like the um, person at the register was like checking out my books for me to buy and I was like this really gives me Willy Wonka vibes and I haven't read a whole lot of books like Willy Wonka since I read it so I figured I was gonna pick this up and it's a pretty thick book so I'm really interested to get into this I love a good middle grade I know I read a lot of horror but I'm basically a like an 11 year old at heart so we're really interested in this who's we why do I keep saying we who knows the next book that I got is a cosmology of monsters first of all look at this cover it is beautiful it is absolutely gorgeous also if you look closely here it's another Stephen King commendation um, if John Irving ever wrote a horror novel it would be something like this I loved it see I don't know I don't know do I trust you Stephen King I don't know I love him as an author but I don't know. Um, okay, so it says, Noah Turner sees monsters. His father saw them and built a shrine to them with the wandering dark. An immense horror experience that the whole family operates. His practical mother has caught glimpses of terrors but refuses to believe, too focused on keeping the family from falling apart. His brilliant older sister Eunice can't exercise them from her mind, no matter how many versions of the story she commits to paper and his eldest sister, the dramatic and vulnerable Sydney, won't admit to seeing anything but the beckoning glow of the spotlight until it swallows her up. Noah Turner sees monsters, but unlike his family, no one, Noah lets them in. Interesting. Interesting. I'm very interested to read this. I know I just said interesting like 15 times, but that's how I feel. Um, yeah, a whole family that sees monsters. Hmm. The next book that I got is a Nick Cutter book, The Deep. Um, okay, this, <sighs> I heard good things about this, so let's just get into it. A strange plague called The Gets is decimating humanity on a global scale. It causes people to forget small things at first, like where they left their keys, then the not so small things, like how to drive or the letters of the alphabet. Their bodies forget how to function involuntarily. There is no cure. But far below the surface of the Pacific Ocean, a universal healer hailed as ambrosia has been discovered. In order to study this phenomenon, a special research lab has been built eight miles under the sea's surface. When the station goes incommunicado, a few brave descend through the lightless fathoms in hope of unraveling the mysteries lurking at those crushing depths and perhaps to encounter an evil blacker than anyone could ever imagine. Guys, I'm very interested. First of all, it reminds me of the movie The Abyss. Has anyone ever seen that? I think it's like, it was done in the 80s and it's basically sort of the same thing. Like a crew goes down and I think there are aliens. It's been a while since I've seen it. My, my mother introduced me to it, but it's one of those like cult classics. So, and I have a thing about water. I, I understand like, I really enjoy sci-fi um, that involves like the deep ocean. I've always been fascinated by that. So I'm very interested to get into this. And Nick Cutter is a brutal, twisted little creep. So I'm very excited to read this. The next book that I got was sort of just like a plucked in. I was like, whatever, that sounds great. And it is called Taktum. T-A-A-Q-T-U-M, Taktum, um, an anthology of Arctic horror stories. Guys, that like subtitle really got me because I don't know what that is. I've never heard of Arctic horror stories, but I need all the horror stories that I can get, guys. Okay, so um, it says, Talk to me is an inuktit, <laughs> is an inuktitut, word that means in the dark and these spine tingling horror stories by northern writers show just how dangerous darkness can be a family clinging to survival out on the tundra after a vicious zombie virus a door that beckons waiting to unleash terror behind it a post-apocalyptic community in the far north where things aren't quite what they seem with chilling tales from award-winning authors like richard van camp rachel and sean kitsusulik tinsley um, Aviak Johnston and others, this collection will thrill and entertain even the most seasoned horror fan. I'm a seasoned horror fan. I want to be thrilled. So very excited about this book. And it's, it's beautiful. I don't know if you can see, but it's a dark cover and it has like a vague impression of um, 
a black bird in the in the cover. I really enjoy this. This is beautiful. Okay. The next book was from the middle grade section and I was very excited to grab it because there was only one copy and I was like, that's mine. And this is Don't Turn Out the Lights. And this is by Jonathan Mayberry. And what got me is not only the cover because the cover looks phenomenal, but it says a tribute to Alvin Schwartz, scary stories to tell in the dark. Guys, if you haven't realized by now, I really love short scary stories like i love these anthologies and collections middle grade adult whatever it is give it all to me i want it so i guess it's just it's just oh look at this like inside cover yes we're into that rorschach vibes okay it says in collaboration with the Horror Writers Association, New York Times bestselling author and master of horror Jonathan Mayberry has compiled a gruesome collection of terrifying stories in tribute to Alvin Schwartz's classic Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark series that will absolutely chill readers to the bone. So turn off your lamps, click on your flashlights, and prepare, if you dare, to be utterly spooked. And it says a life-size baby doll who stalks its prey, a flesh-hungry ogre who jingle jangles when he walks, a haunted house just dying for a visitor. What do all these have in common? They're scarier in the dark. I am so into this. I'm very excited to get into this. I'm really upset that like I started a book and I can't, I mean, I could, I could just put it down and read it later, but <sighs> that's a slippery slope. Okay, the last book that I got from my little excursion at page 158 is going to be Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Now, I have been told over and over again when I ask for recommendations for scary novels, this always comes up. It's like one or two people specifically that talk about this book and they're like, you need to read this. Um, one of my friends calls Mary Shelley the original goth girl and I believe it. Um, and I think it's just time. It's just, it's a classic. It's just time to read Frankenstein. Now, here's the thing. I'm not very good with classics. I don't have a good track record. I'm probably going to struggle through it, but you know, it's not very long. I feel like I can do this. I've read worse things before. Like, what is it that, a, a Sorcery of Thorns. Everyone loved that freaking book and I read a lot of it. Ugh. Okay. Um, but if you don't know what Frankenstein is about, really but um basically a scientist he creates a living man again that's probably the worst synopsis but if you don't know what Frankenstein is about I can't talk to you right now <laughs> anyway this is the last book that I got from page 158 and it's been a while since I've been in the store the actual store uh, just in bookstores in general but page 158 I probably haven't been in since I don't know January, maybe even December when I went to like a book club meeting at that point, but I don't know guys, it was great. I've been corresponding with the um, uh, the owners um, a lot just because I order from them even though I'm not going in there and they absolutely knew who I was. It was really sweet. And you know what? This is the exact reason why I, it's always good to support your local bookstores. Um, when you buy cheaply, um, like, you know, online books specifically from Amazon, those prices are the way they are because Amazon buys books at like a, an incredible amount, like just like bulk buying books and local bookstores can't compete with that. So that's why it's more expensive and no shade to anyone who orders on Amazon or, you know, like book outlet. But if you have the extra bit of money, it's good to support these um, local bookstores because they can't survive without us, especially during this pandemic. I don't know how many times I was in, or I don't know how many times she said it while I was in there, but she was like, thank you so much. It means so much that you support our store. And it's important to, you know, give your community bookstore a little hug in the shape of money and your book fanaticism. Anyway, I'm jumping off my soapbox. Um, like I said, no shade if you order online. I still order online every now and then if I can't find a book in the store or if they can't get it fast enough. It happens. It's a convenience thing, but I really enjoy page 158. And if you happen to be in the Raleigh area, this is the place to go. Super cute, super cozy. And that's it. That is my book shopping adventure for the day. I'm going to get reading. Hopefully I'm going to go and get scared. So I'll see you guys later.
Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Like the video, it really helps my channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you always know when I've got good things coming to you. Bye, y'all.